Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode of my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you onto my computer and I talk you through my process, my workflow, and my thoughts on an image from a recent shoot. Now, this week, it's the turn of an incredible adventure, actually, that I had. I went down to an area in West Cork, a place called Baltimore and to an area called The Beacon and it's a place that reminded me of my childhood because I used to go there quite a lot with my parents and now for me to go back there this day and to bring you guys along was quite special for me anyway first and foremost but also because I got to share it with a buddy of mine a friend of mine who's been my friend since I've been four years of age we grew up together and now he decided he wanted to come on a shoot with me and it was great for him because he also be able to help me from a filming point of view but the conditions that we had were absolutely absolutely fantastic during the day. We had some patchy clouds, we had some really fleeting light, and then towards the end of the evening, it was okay, it went nice, we got some nice light for sunset, but I decided to hang around until after sunset into blue hour. And that's the image that I'm going to talk you through and how I edited here today on Lightroom Classic. Now also, during that, I'm going to share one error that I made during this, so hopefully you can avoid that error yourself. So let's go. All right, so here we are now, and I'm with this image here on Lightroom. And as you can see, it's an image here of this stunning structure, which is the beacon. It's on the cliffside in Baltimore, and it's looking out into the Atlantic over here. But what you also have is Shirkin Island that's just across from us also. Now, Shirkin Island is a place that I visited probably around maybe 10 or 15 years ago with my wife. We went actually camping on there, and it was a phenomenal place to visit. But on this day now, this was my shot that I took, and it was after sunset. So I waited around for blue hour. And if I give you a look here at the image overall, what I decided to do was to see, okay, what can I get the most out of the image? So looking at this image here, you can see that I focused on the uh, the beacon and my settings were 2.5 seconds. I was at f16. I was at ISO 100 And the reason I went for 2.5 seconds is because I wanted to smooth out the water a small little bit But leave a bit of texture, but also because it was blue hour the direct light had actually gone So now it was down to the ambient light that was remaining now with this image as well here if you notice on the histogram, you can see that there's an error because this area on the right hand side here is overexposed so I actually had this error was caused because I put on my polarizer, but if you look at the screen here, you can see that this area is blue, and then this area goes white again, and then this area goes white again also. So my polarizer was orientated in the wrong spot. Now, that's a, a very important thing to use when you're looking at the polarizer, is always check on the back of the camera and move the polarizer around and look at your sky. I had the polarizer on because I was actually seeing could I do something with the water down here, but I had moved it, but I never adjusted it afterwards before I took this shot. So a top tip, I suppose, on that is when you're using the polarizer, make sure that you're not getting this banding in the sky or this blue area within the sky. Now, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, circumvent that a bit anyway. But within this image, what I really like about it is this looks effectively 3D. So if you look at the detail here, if I zoom in, you can see we have this detail here on this beacon and it's kind of standing as if it's proud because even at f16 the depth of field here you'd imagine would be a lot deeper but it wasn't because of the ambient light that was there but the reason also as well because you look at the cliffs here i wanted to get all the details into the cliffs if i'd gone for a f4 or even you know f5.1 or f8 um i would then also had to make sure i put on different types of filters because the light would have been too much but here anyway as it was i had my polarizer on and that was all i had on at the time so it allowed me to get to 2.5 seconds but I messed up but hopefully like I say I'll be able to resolve that so that being said um, this image also has a special meaning to me like I said in the intro I shared it with a buddy of mine if you've watched that episode actually you'll see that he was stood right here uh, for most of my shoot um, but I left him in the shot because it gave good scale and also we had a number of seagulls that were dive bombing down the side here so they were curving in and diving down so I've got some of those in the shots as well also so for this edit it's gonna be pretty straightforward but with the complication that I created for myself so first and foremost I'm going to look and say okay do I need to straighten 
in my horizon. Clearly I do. So this is unusual for me because I normally try and get it right in field, but obviously I must have been distracted here. So there's quite a lot actually that I need to adjust here. Now, if I look at this, I want to make sure I'm getting that right. So now the horizon is straight and I am losing a small bit of detail on the outside of the frame as a result of that. But again, not overly concerned with that. I can look to move this uh, slightly to the left so I can put this pillar here on the rule of thirds on the left hand third and that also gets rid of some of the overexposure that I have on the right hand side so that'll do me for now so I'll settle on that and then looking at this here what do I want to look at so my histogram is going to tell me and as you can see now if I look at the, where the area is overexposed it's actually a lot less it's only just a small area on the right hand side so that has helped me with my error anyway but this sky looks extremely bright nonetheless so we're going to click into auto which i generally do just gives me a good steer to see what i can do within the image and as you can see here it didn't really do overly much from the finished edit if i look at the before and the after it's got a bit more detail back within that sky and it's also brought out a bit of color here on the cliffs now if you look here there's a couple of areas that are blue because they're dark they're blacker than black i can bring those up when i play around with my sliders so highlights are down quite far but i want to try and do something slightly different so i'm going to take my exposure and I'm going to drop my exposure down and out this is telling me here that my overexposure is gone so my highlight has actually been resolved now if I go into my shadows and I pull my shadows up that's going to lighten up all of the area here on the cliff if I take my whites I can make that now slightly brighter I don't have much to be able to play with here but the histogram is telling me what I can and can't do so I'm just clipping here on the right hand side but it's not actually showing within the image so I'm happy with that and then my blacks I want to bring those up because I want to be able to brighten up the darker areas in the image overall and I think that's working perfectly fine then for me now auto has given me a plus six on contrast if I bring my contrast down it creates more of an airy look in the image if I bring it up it creates more of a crunch. Um, so I'm thinking here, like I'm looking at this, what do I want to be able to achieve? Now, when I crunch it, it's making this area here darker, my error. So if I take my contrast and I bring it slightly to the left, it makes that image a lot more airy. So I think I'm going to go down that route. Now, the next ones here is texture I don't need to do, clarity I don't need to do, but on dehaze, I want to give that a slight touch of dehaze. And watch what happens here when I bring this up slightly. You see now I'm starting to get a bit more detail back in the sky, but I'm still creating this more or less 3D effect or the bright and airy image overall there. Now by doing that as well, it helps me because it gives me a bit more to be able to play with within the image. Now 32 for me on dehaze I think is a bit too much. I'll probably go to around maybe 15, I'm happy with that. And then vibrance has given me automatically a 13. I think that that's okay but I'm just going to increase it slightly just because I want to bring out a bit more of the color here on the beautiful cliff that we had in front of us now if I fit this onto the screen you can see here what this image here is really nice and appealing it is anyway to me now also on the bottom right hand corner here I do have this solitary rock that's sticking out and that could potentially act as a distraction so do I now look and say okay at the, do I run the risk of losing some of the overall image but just to mitigate that rock that's down here now when i bring it up this becomes more proud and a 16.9 i think works for me because it's a wide vista view so i want to take that and i'm going to close that down here now i've spotted as well up here that i have a sensor spot and that's something that i do have still on my sensor i haven't cleaned it uh, yet very simple to remove come in here go into your heel tool just select that and that's going to find the solution and remove it for you. But also, if you've seen these episodes before, you'll see I've got my trick, which is on dehaze. So if I click my dehaze all the way up, remembering it was at 14, so I want to go back to that afterwards, click my dehaze all the way up here. Now it's revealing another couple of sensor spots which weren't visible a moment ago. So if I bring that back down here to where it was at the 14, now I can see it here because my eye is tuned into it, but I can only see one, when in actual fact, there's two. So there's a second one right here. So simply go in again, take my heel I'm going to make this a small bit smaller and I'm going to take the second one out of here as well and I come a quick scan over the image there's nothing else there to remove so I'll come back into here and then I'm going to take my dehaze and bring that back down again to 14 and then voila everything is done from there now 
On the other side, when I look at this bright area here, the image seems a bit unbalanced to me because I know there's a lot of bright area coming from the right hand side. So that's when I can take my linear gradient. And normally you take that and you drag it down from the top. But if you bring it to the right hand side, holding down shift and then you drag across here, you can actually bring that in from either side of the image. Now I'm going to have that relatively long because I want it extremely soft. I don't want it as, as prominent or easily visible. So if I drag this across here, you can see now where I'm bringing this and what it's affecting within the image. Now I can turn this off right so you don't have to see where that is but more importantly there's been nothing changed on that all I want to look at here is my highlights so I want to bring my highlights slightly down and if I bring my exposure down it becomes too prevalent and you can see this line appearing so I don't want to do that I'm going to bring my highlights down here try and balance it out a bit more and then if I look at my shadows if I bring that down it darkens down below as well so now it doesn't have that brightness it kind of gives it this more balanced feel and then I can look at my contrast and I can slightly decrease my contrast again here and now when I look at the image here it's a lot more balanced but I still do have this error here in the center oh and by the way I've just spotted another sensor spot right in here as I'm looking at this now when I look at this overall image here you know it's nice but I would have preferred if I hadn't made that error in the center because you can see there is a lot that's going on here in different layerings and gradients and that's the thing you know I want to share within my channel the good things and also the mistakes that I can make so hopefully you can avoid them as well also so looking at that here I think this overall image works for me but I do want to see if I can now bring it a small bit brighter so now because I've made those changes I can affect the overall aspect of the screen looking at this here there's nothing blown it is making the overall image brighter so I like that and more importantly I'm okay with a small bit of blowing here on this because I want to be able to brighten up this whole beacon as well also as well so yeah that's my image the final thing I'm going to do on that is as always go into my denoise and see is there any noise for me to remove the possible will be a small bit of denoise in the shadows might be in the rocks as you can see here but if I look and let it do its thing it's going to give me a view of before and after not much here on that if I look up here where I've got the top of the beacon and just on the left hand side of that you can see on the sky so now it smoothed it out it was a small bit again I'm pixel peeping here so it's never going to be really visible but yeah I'm going to let that do its thing and and finish off what it's going to do now I could also oh it's not doing it okay I'll do that separately there must be an error um I could also remove this one rock down here and in fact you know let's see if I can do that before I finish that so I'm going to just take this brush make it a bit bigger I'm going to brush this out and it should find an area that's close enough you can see here it's taking the sky that's not going to work for me obviously now I want to be able to bring it to a more of a darker area on this side here so I can get a bit more balanced and it might take me a second go just to wipe across this here and strange now it's taking from all these different areas but yeah we'll see if we can find an area here that's going to make sure that that completely disappears and that I don't actually see that there's something uh, remaining within the image there is not okay so that means that it can't heal it so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to go into my clone stamp and I'm going to change that and it's going to take this part here and see then can it clone it from somewhere else so it's taking from the left hand side here I think over here is probably better that's even too bright so it's about fine tuning moving where it's finding its selection from until you can find an area where it actually smooths out so you can see it's getting darker and darker as I go to the left hand side and now around about here I think is right if I look at that I know that it was there but if you're looking at the image you wouldn't know that it's there anyway so yeah that's my finished image I do still like the image nonetheless even though I do have this error but you know like I said this is about me sharing my entire journey so that you can hopefully avoid those mistakes so hope you enjoyed this episode be sure to join me next Sunday because I am back on the road again back up to visit my buddy Bernard and back up to Connemara and I can't wait to share with you the adventures that we had. I got some phenomenal uh, locations, some great conditions and some fantastic images and some fantastic drone footage as well because this was the inaugural one where I had my new drone. So now I brought that to Connemara and I can't wait to share that with you. So hopefully you can join me next Sunday for that. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and hopefully you'll avoid making the polarizing mistake like me. If it's your first time on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlong the fall.